Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge Series. So, SideFX is holding a challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic every day for the month of July. I have decided to take on the challenge and also record and edit all of my work so that you get to see the process behind it. I'm doing this because I like a good challenge. So, let's get into it. Welcome back. So, today is muscle. Um, actually, today isn't muscle. Today is um, urban. <laughs> That's that's how behind I am are these these videos. So you can expect four or five videos in the next two days. Um, immediately after I'm finished muscle, I'm gonna record peak. Immediately after that, I'll record space. If I still have it in me, I'll record urban. What's happened is I fell behind on these videos, so I'm gonna keep them a lot shorter and simpler. So I just go through the time lapse, give you a quick breakdown. I'm trying to focus on my entries in these last few days, so the videos might kind of be put on a back burner. So I apologize. But let's get straight into Muscle. So Muscle, the idea was actually from Attack on Titan. In there, there's these things called Titans, but some humans can turn into Titans. And when they do, there's a pretty cool thing where like Muscle grows onto them. Um, and I thought it's a really interesting look and it would be cool in real life. So I wanted to give that a try. It didn't really work out as planned. Um, and so I switched it up towards the end and made it more like an anatomical model. Um, very clinical looking and it ended up winning on day 18 for muscle so that was pretty cool unexpected because i didn't really think it was great but hey i'll take it so let's get straight into it Right, so here we go. Um, first things first, let me show you what I started with. I started with this simple nail base mesh. You can just drop it down by tabbing, characters, simple nail, right? And he's got a very rudimentary rig, but you can do basic animations with it. And so the animation that I did for this was a lot of keyframing and some noises, but basically the hand shakes like that. It does a bit of movement. So let me play it back in real time for you. So you can see it's almost like a very weak, creepy movement in the beginning, and then it strengthens, and then at the end it's kind of like full strength, you know, just to show that it's now strong. And so the idea is it's brittle bone to start with, and then it turns into this muscular arm. Um, the only thing that I would say is probably interesting on here is the noises that I add. So you can actually right click on a parameter and say motion effects noise um, over here. And it'll create a chop network for you that adds noise. So you can see I have two over here. Um, and this is just generated just by doing that, right clicking and saying motion effects noise. And it adds that really interesting movement. You can see it over here where the wrist is sort of shaking. You see that shaking movement over there? Like I didn't keyframe that, that's based on noise. Um, so that's very cool. It helps you add that sort of natural look to it. For animation, that's great. So anyways, I take that into this arm setup. There's a, a lot going on here, but a lot of it I kind of duplicated over, just repeated. Um, it looks like a lot more than it is. It, it did take some time, but not as much as you'd think. So firstly, 
I remove everything except the hand, right? So now I just have this hand, hand geometry, cool. And then I also have this bone structure. And I'll show you how I made that quick. It's just, um, I took the base mesh, right? So you can see it over here. And I just added little bones. I made a little tube, subdivide, edit, so that you end up with this shape, and then just make multiple copies of it and transform them into different positions. Then make longer ones over there, and just keep repeating that until you reach the base. And then over here, you have the arm bones. It's basically just tubes with some editing going on. And over here, just some spheres, and then I try and push them around so it looks more or less anatomically correct. That goes into a merge network, right? And then I do some minor adjustments to it with this edit, so it looks more like bones. And this is kind of interesting. I then point deform. So point deform, um, you'll have some issues if you try too much of a deformation. So I deform it into the base position of the hand, right? So like this. And then I do a for each and a pack. So when you pack it, each bone acts as a single point. Why that's useful is that it can't deform itself. So what I mean by that is, say this arm bone, it can't bend halfway through the arm, which is exactly what you want for a bone. So you pack it, right? So each piece gets packed and you point deform it with a deforming geometry. What that results in is a hand that takes on that same animation. And then all you have to do is unpack it later on, unpack it down here. So you can see over here, I have it cached to disk. If you play it back, it's the exact same animation taken from the simple male rig. Cool, so you have the bones. And then I move on to muscles. So this over here, I made a single subnet. It's a muscle maker subnet. And I draw a curve on the hand, right? Or a bunch of curves rather. So you can see over here, those in red are the curves. So I draw a bunch of curves on a hand. Then I put it into the muscle maker. All the muscle maker takes as an input is the bones, right? So it takes these bones as an input and it uses that to fuse the endpoints. So I'll show you how this looks. You resample the curves that are coming in. And then very much like um, with the wire setup for the astronaut, I use curve U to define endpoints, right? So this is something that you'll often do where you define endpoints using curve U. Then I raid onto the bones, right? So now they are stuck onto the bones but then I move it away from the bones based on curve U. So only the end bits stick directly onto the bones. Attribute blur, attribute, attribute blur to smooth it. Then you polywire each one of these so that you end up with basically a thick wire. And then what you can do with this wire is use its rows to generate more wires. So you convert them to rows. And then I just do some polypathing. Um, this carve thing is an animation so that it grows out. Right? So that's how I get that growth effect. And then I define a connective. So this connective basically, is it connecting to the bone or is it not? I just polywire all of those rows and then give it a color. On the side over here, um, I wasn't really happy with this, but I was running out of time, so I didn't have much of a choice, but it's a connective tissue sort of like generator because all of these need to connect to a certain mass. So I'm just generating points on the ends of all of the curves, right? So you can see P gen. Uh, point jitter it and then ray it onto the bones so that you have these little areas um, just vdb from particles so that you end up with these little areas um, where the muscle connects merge it with the muscle you have that then all i do is copy this over a bunch of times um, making minor adjustments for example the fingers you want thinner muscles that are more like connective tissue so i just make some minor adjustments to the thickness of the wire that you base the rows off of and you end up with this. So then you make a whole bunch of them, you're just drawing curves on different parts of the hand um, and allowing it to generate some, some muscles for you. That gets merged together so that you have this. Um, I file cache it because it does take a little while to generate. There you can see um, this is like the end of it. And then I time warp it so that it actually starts at an earlier frame. Then I point deform, but not packing because muscles do actually bend, right? So you can afford to have them bend. Point deform them again, that goes into another file cache. And now you have the deforming muscle. And then the last step is to just merge it with the existing bones and then transfer the velocity from the bones onto the muscle because the bones have um, topology that remains the same. The muscle's topology is changing, so you won't be able to generate trails on them. So 
Um, that's also why it kind of looks like stop motion, which I actually liked. Um, you can generate velocity. If you do some um, calculations between the newly created points and the existing points, you can find a direction for a velocity vector. That was kind of beyond the scope of what I wanted to do though. Um, and these muscles aren't anatomically correct. There's enough of them that are close to anatomically correct to sell it as a hand. For example, this one over here looks very much like that in real life. Yeah, so that's how I did this one. And then it was just an interesting camera move. Super shallow depth of field just makes it look more interesting. But yeah, you end up with this and the final render looks like this. Cool, so I hope that you don't mind these shorter, more brief videos, also a bit more serious. I'm not, in, I'm not intending to be more serious, but um, I'll just try to get through, the, get through the, the setup, right? Trying not to go off on a tangent. So the next two videos, I know this because I've already done them. Um, I wasn't happy with the entries, but I'll show you them anyways. Like you shouldn't only see when I'm doing well. You should definitely also see when I'm not doing well. And so peak and space weren't great. No, peak was okay. Space wasn't great. I was very happy with day 21. So I'll show you all of that coming soon, probably later today, probably tomorrow, who knows, but definitely very soon. So see you then. Thank you for watching. Bye.